Rejoice, Grand Strategy Gamers, for we are spoiled for choice these days. Whether we're talking heavy hitters with the known names or the underdogs that hit way above their weight, there is a lot on offer for those who enjoy Grand Strategy set in historical settings in particular. And today, we're going through the most awesome of them all, set in the medieval era. And if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll hit that like button and leave a comment down below with your current favorite Grand Strategy game. Now a bit of a disclaimer. When I say Grand Strategy, what I mean is a strategy game that first of all offers a campaign map, and second of all, which focuses on a mix of conquest and deeper internal mechanics. Meaning that not everything revolves around feeding the war machine only. And third, that they offer a ton of variety in terms of factions and their number. In essence, these are games that require a lot of thinking, strategizing, and learning at their best. Although this will of course be relative to any one of us. And you know what else might require a lot of strategizing? Getting ready in the morning or for that hot date, which is why this video is brought to you by Manscaped. If you're like me and you're constantly leading armies and even taking the time to personally track down the enemy king in the field, you might find it tough to keep it tight and clean for the princess or prince back home. Because it matters if those cannonballs are well polished. Luckily, Manscaped's been a part of my retinue for the past weeks and it's really changed up my game and about 10 million other men's out there too. It's all thanks to the performance package which includes the Lawnmower 5.0, an electric trimmer with the next-gen upgraded dual skin safe blades and interchangeable foil blade for enhanced performance. With the new and improved trimmer, ultra precision and stress-free trimming is easier than ever. The performance package even includes the Weed Whacker 2.0, the Crop Soother and Crop Preserver, and two gifts, a slick pair of boxers 2.0 and the Shed 2.0 for all your organizing needs. Head over to manscaped.com to get your performance package 5.0 Ultra today and use my promo code Andy's take to get 20% off plus free shipping and two gifts. That's manscaped.com and use my promo code Andy's take for 20% off free shipping and two gifts. Thank you so much to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. In the spirit of highlighting genuinely great games that you might not already know of and who I believe deserve more attention, we begin with the latest and freshest of them all, namely Field of Glory Kingdoms, a grand strategy game from Agiod and Slytherin and one which holds a secret. For you see, while this is a campaign map based game, you can actually combine it with Field of Glory Medieval to actually play out those tactical battles yourself, which really allows you to get immersed in turn based battles where tactics and strategy is vital, and with unique armies and units for every faction. And if you wonder why they're not just the same game to begin with, that's because Kingdoms and Medieval are two entirely different games from two different developers, but under the same publisher, meaning this integration is actually a truly awesome concept. However, Field of Glory Kingdoms is worth it alone due to its strong campaign concepts. Here, we have an obscene amount of factions, each one with their own unique modifiers and historical backgrounds. Featuring its own pop system where you must manage your population and race buildings to create a thriving empire, you must make sure to carefully consider diplomacy and the nations around you. Managing vassals is a massive deal, but so is carefully making use of regional decisions, where you get to use powerful maneuvers to get ahead. And don't forget about the decadency system, where factions either thrive or decline as time goes on. While Field of Glory Kingdoms might not feature the flashiest of visuals, it does look uniquely charming, and makes up for those quadruple looks in its depth and attention to detail, like having to manage your royal families and going on crusades and jihads. Importantly, Kingdoms gave me that feeling of satisfaction as I learned more and more about how the game worked. And when everything clicked, I got hooked. Field of Glory Kingdoms and Medieval are available now on Steam, and I highly recommend you checking them out if you want to get lost in a completely new strategy game. Next up is a game that released back in 2022, but which has only gotten better since. Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign. What I like about Knights of Honor 2 is how approachable it is, which honestly might set it apart from quite a lot of grand strategy titles. Sure, it might seem like a lot in the beginning, but I like that it doesn't take itself too seriously, while still being so charming. From the announcer in the main menu to the music that features a lot of pomp and relaxing tracks, I just instantly fell in love with the style and vibe of this game, and I think you will too. While again the visuals are not ultra realistic, they do the job nicely, and I like how rich the world looks in terms of color. It's also gamified in a neat way, with the UI that shows the value of cities, namely in terms of income and available manpower. Of course, as a grand strategy game, we perform diplomacy with our neighbors, but we also receive diplomatic and economically related events depending on who we have employed in our court. This is a unique system to this series, where you essentially appoint powerful advisors who are in charge of the realm's various aspects. There are two sides of Knights of Honor 2 I like in particular. 
First is the building and UI systems, which feel so immersive thanks to the beautiful artworks and large, yet non-intrusive windows. And second is the way warfare works. You see, contrary to Field of Glory Kingdoms, which is turn-based like Total War games, Knights of Honor 2 is in fact real-time like Paradox games, but in many ways feels more like a Total War game. This means that when you're moving armies about the map, it's all happening live so to speak, which has major implications for sieging. Sieging takes time in this game, and you risk being intercepted by an enemy army while doing so, making for potentially extremely intense wars. I further love that the campaign map feels filled to the brim with hotspots, because here we have both large cities and smaller towns, and you can individually attack and sack the smaller to starve out or sabotage the larger ones. And just like in Field of Glory Kingdoms, Knights of Honor 2 features manually played battles, but this time, they're real-time and fully integrated into one game. This means that we have another grand strategy game that combines that political campaign map overlay with quote-unquote boots on the ground warfare. In other words, if you want a medieval grand strategy experience that feels charming, fun, and quite unique to boot, with a ton of good vibes only, then Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign is highly recommended and is available on Steam. Next up is something I want to highlight because of how truly amazing it is, despite actually not being its own game, but rather a user-made mod. Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD is a total overhaul mod for Total War Attila and takes us right into the 13th century. This is a time of crisis, where the Eastern Roman Empire is collapsing all around itself after the Fourth Crusade, where the forces of Islam have reconquered much of the Holy Land, and where the Reconquista is underway in Iberia. Built on Total War Attila, what we have here is a massive game with excellent visuals that in many ways still stomps all over any other medieval grand strategy game. With a massive campaign map steeped in detail, factions all over the map, a deep family tree with governor and general systems, a full-on fertility system which determines how lucrative settlements will be in terms of food, and so much more, Attila's campaign, which now has been further enhanced by medieval kingdoms by, among other things, separating regions into their very own cities again, makes this honestly one of the best grand strategy experiences ever made. That's not even mentioning those massive real-time battles, where the modders have created insanely beautiful models for each unit type and for every faction, making this a medieval experience on par with modern AAA titles almost 10 years later. In fact, in some ways better than what the original developers themselves have made. In other words, if you've been itching for some grand-scale Total War, or just a visual and strategical spectacle of a medieval experience, then Total War Attila with the Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD mod is definitely the way to go and can be found on the game's Steam Workshop page. However, if you've been missing or wanting a somewhat more relaxing or charming Total War experience, my suggestion will always be to look into the past and boot up Medieval 2 Total War itself. Medieval 2 is a classic in every way, and while you can certainly tell its age in terms of visuals and certain camera movement moments, the game itself is still a banger. The campaign mechanics are easy to understand, focusing mostly on building up your cities, diplomacy, and trade, but I also love the family tree and how your generals gain traits based on their actions. Medieval 2 focuses mostly on Europe and the Near East, but with the expansions, you also get focused campaigns on Britannia, the Levant, the Americas, and the Baltics, with even more focus and new events. And of course, as is Total War's signature style, the games offer that sweet combination of campaign maps and battle maps meaning taking your time and learning the ins and outs of both is vital to make it ahead. It's only a bonus that Medieval 2 comes with so many overall mods that deepen this experience so much further, like the Stainless Steel Historical Improvement Project, which adds a slew of new mechanics, units, and an entirely new and massive map. If only CA could get their finger out and make us a Medieval 2 remaster already, I'd be a mighty happy man. And finally, we have perhaps the deepest and best Medieval Grand Strategy games of all time, Crusader Kings 2. Or what I guess 3, since that's still being developed and getting better every year. My first Paradox game was CK2, and when I say Paradox game, certain ideas might flash before your eyes. Insane depth, sandbox levels of interactivity, random events, planning and strategic decision making, it's all here, and the first time I played this one was a revelation to me. Now these games will be quite hard to learn if you're completely new to them, but there are a ton of tutorials out there which will make your path a lot easier. CK2 is a grand strategy game that in contrast to almost every other such game is all about managing your characters and how they relate to others. You build a dynasty here and navigate the complex relationships and situations of medieval royal life but there's so much added on top, like council mechanics, lawmaking, warfare, deep diplomacy systems and so much more. But if CK2 feels a bit too old for you, CK3 comes with updated visuals, entirely new cultural mechanics, unique and revolutionary new spaces like an actual royal court, tourney grounds and more, and of course, keeps getting new DLC, massive mods and expansions. Of course though, Crusader Kings do not have manual battles, which every other game on this list in theory can offer. 
In other words, if you want a complete experience that will remain the same and is still a legend, try your hand on CK2. If you want something newer, still in development but still offers a massive and immersive experience, then CK3 might be your best bet. No matter which you pick though, you can't go wrong with the Crusader King series. And that was my list of the best medieval historical strategy games to play right now. They all offer different experiences and come with their own unique mechanics. And as such, each one has a ton to offer for both new and experienced players. Let me know which ones you prefer and which ones you might give a go, and make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, thank you so much to Manscaped for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!